So hello everyone, my name is Chase Stevens and I'm an organizer for the OpenStreetMap Seattle Meetup Group. I'm really glad to be here and I'm glad that all of you are here. Um, I'm, I hope, I'm hoping that you're having a great time in Seattle. So uh, the theme of our conference this year is building community. And uh, what that means to me is that we have a lot of people in our project and we're always looking for more. And what we need is their, you know, their mapping contributions and their technical comp contributions and their talents and their diversity uh, and their uh, values and their goals. But when you get to a certain number, eventually you're going to, uh, some of those goals and values are gonna conflict and then we're gonna, we're gonna reach some disagreement. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, one of those topics of disagreement today. And hopefully uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, we can find a way to stick together and uh, <clears throat> do what's right f for the project in the long term. So this is uh, sort of like an intro talk, uh, hopefully like a good primer for people who are new and also maybe a refresher for people who've been around the project for a while. So um, first question I'm gonna say is uh, why are we here? Um, and the answer to that is, uh, and what are we doing, it says. <laughs> uh, and it says, uh, the answer to that right on the front page of our osm.org uh, page, right here in this little, uh, little banner there, um, it says that uh, we're creating Map of the World, it's being uh, created by people like you, and we're giving it away for free under an open license. And I'm gonna rephrase that just a little bit to two categories. So we're mapping the world together, and uh, by the way, we have a philosophy behind how we're doing that, and that drives what we do. So um, what I'm gonna do is uh, talk about both of those points and uh, come up with a call to action and then a conclusion. Uh, so first point, mapping the world. Great thing about this is I don't really have to talk about this topic <laughs> because I've had other people at this conference give really good talks on this and so they've covered it. Um, Drishti Patel last, uh, yesterday uh, gave a talk about mapathons uh, and if, if, in case for the video, if you don't know what a mapathon is, it's basically like a sewing circle with browsers and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, your laptops and you get together with your friends and you can trace imagery like halfway around the world. And it's a great way to contribute and um, I really recommend that you go uh, view her talk when it becomes available in the next couple days. And then just an hour ago, I'm sorry I missed it because I was prepping, but uh, Andrew Wiseman gave a great talk on field papers. He told me um, that he, uh, you know, uh, gave a talk about going out and collecting data firsthand with a group of friends in, in your neighborhood. And that's another great way to contribute to the uh, project. And it's something that OSM Seattle does all the time. I uh, recommend that you go, uh, there he's right there. <laughs> and I recommend that you go uh, watch his talk. This talking stuff is really easy. You just direct people to other people's talks. <laughs> um, so I can jump right to the call to action, which is uh, one, of my, uh, one of my favorite topics here. Uh, basically mapping what you know. And I know that we're web developers and we're programmers and we're decision makers and we wanna use our talents that way, but I would really encourage us not to overlook the, the power of the individual contribution because uh, it's really important. And the concrete steps that you can take to do that is like, for one thing, number one, install a, a, an editor on your smartphone. It's like, I'm asking that you wait like 15 minutes to do this <laughs> until after the talk. But uh, uh, like for instance, go map for iOS. Uh, Bryce Cogswell is in the OSM Seattle, I, I know him, and he's a great guy, and the, everyone loves the app, so I would recommend that you install that, or I use Vespucci myself on my Android device. And then, then you have the tool. And you know we're really domain experts in at least two areas, like the things that we pass every day and the things that are right in front of us. So if you have this tool on your phone, then it's like, like map what you see, what you care about, it's like if you see like a business that's shuttered or one that's having a grand open, I'm trying to change the mindset so that you, you think, oh, well, maybe I can put that in the map. Um, so uh, it's like if you like uh, little free libraries like I do, I put in like about 40 of them. I can't get them all because they're super popular. <laughs> so it's like I could use a little bit of help. <laughs> so, um, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, I guarantee that you will become a better contributor to OSM if you do this. So. Uh, Moving on to the next subject, um, which is the philosophy behind this. Um, I have a really great quote here, and I have a lot of like, like text heavy slides here, and I'm gonna kind of paraphrase, so I might move, so it'll go through a little faster. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, so what Richard Stallman, the uh, free software guy says, is that free software has uh, developed a lot of practical advantages and people are flocking to it for that reason. But interest is growing faster than the awareness of the philosophy it's based on, which leads to trouble. 
He's like, we need to, in order to stand firm for freedom, like free software, we need to spread the idea to new users as they come into the community. But we're failing to do this. It's like, uh, the, the efforts to, to bring you new users in is far outstripping this, and we need to do both, and we need to keep the two efforts in balance. So that's what I'm trying to do today. Um, I'm gonna start with a really brief history of like OSM. I'm sure most of you have heard this already, but uh, uh, Steve Coast started OSM in 2004 in the UK. And that is not a coincidence, because apparently there's a, an entity in the UK called the Ordnance Survey. And uh, what they do, what their charter is, is to gather vast amounts of uh, geodata there and build these beautiful maps. And they've been doing this for over 200 years. I've read that uh, it's uh, more amazing than anything, any other kind of map in the world. Uh, the problem is, is that it's non-free. It's like the very definition of proprietary. Uh, you know, they have that data and they can make their maps, but you don't have access to it. You don't have the same access. And you could probably buy your way in if you had enough money, but most of us casual people don't. So you really, it's really off limits to you. Um, I built this handy little table here. You can ignore the stuff on the right because it's all great. But the stuff on the left is the, my uh, proprietary stack. It starts uh, at the bottom with, uh, do you have access to the raw data? And then on top of that, do you have access to tools? And then the top is uh, what kind of, uh, what can you do with the maps that you create? And uh, it's like, I'll start at the bottom. Basically, uh, if, you, uh, if you look at that, um, most of the time you don't have access to the data, like, or like I just said, it costs a lot. And so you don't have access to the data. Uh, the next up, it's like you get a, perhaps you're going through a vendor and they'll give you like a limited window into the tool. Or once again, you can buy a license for like $1,500, which is really expensive for most of us. Um, and then on, when you get to the top, it's like you finally get a map, and what can you do with it? It's like, can you, uh, can you print that out and print out a t-shirt? Um, can you sell that t-shirt? Um, can you make art out of it? And can you republish it in a book? And if any of those questions is no, then you're under a lot of heavy restrictions. Um, if you go to OpenStreetMap, on the, other, on the other hand, if you sent a note to the mailing list and asked, uh, if you could get the data, someone, I'm sure someone would send you a note that's like, hey, um, here's the URL, <laughs> and you can download it, and here's some open source tools you can use to fill around with it, and, uh, and then on top of that, um, all those questions that I, all those uses that I mentioned just before, the answer is all yes. So this really amazing project, and my point is, take a breath here, uh, is that uh, we're on the right track. So OpenStreetMap, as it is today, gives you the power and permission to use the data in any way you want, pretty much. Um, so not everyone agrees with me. Uh, uh, since we switched to the ODBL in uh, uh, 2012, it was really painful, um, there have been some calls to, to change the license or dump it. And uh, you know, people have said public domain, attribution only, and this isn't a surprise because you know, we're always, they're always conflicting, right? But it's like my thesis today is that this is seriously gonna damage the project. And so I'm, I'm encouraging us not to do this. Um, to get some help here, I'm gonna add a few new voices to this. Um, Richard Stallman is like top down. Richard Stallman, the free software guy. Uh, Eric Raymond, the open source guy. And Christopher Kelty, who's an anthropologist and an author who writes on digital topics. Um, and I said earlier, that we've been, I think that we've been uh, fighting these battles for like 30 years. So I'm gonna go through them uh, decade by decade. <laughs> Uh, for instance, uh, you have the 80s, you had proprietary Unix, so the operating system. Basically, uh, in that case, the licensing terms when it first started, there's no such thing as like Unix. There's like all these versions that came out and the licensing was kind of fuzzy. So there are all these different versions and they're all slightly incompatible. And in, you know, it's like, instead of being able to standardize, they all wanted to become the, the, the standard. So instead of expanding the market, they just competed with each other and did all this infight against. Eventually, as Raymond says here, the proprietary Unix fell apart because of their desire to differentiate their projects, their products, and uh, not maintaining compatibility. So it, I think it's pretty safe to say that it kind of paved the way for a proprietary single solution, like Windows, perhaps. Um, in the 90s, uh, we had another new te 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 sorry. <laughs> technology called the web. And we had two players in this category, Netscape and Microsoft. And uh, each one of them was, they were on the standards committee, but at the same time, in the back, both companies were in, uh, implementing all these features and extensions. I've heard even like kind of sabotaging each other on the server. <laughs> so, um, so it's like this, this desire to, to win the market and this competitive advantage stuff was really like 
it was really a problem. If you remember these little tabs that tell you like which browser you needed to, to run in order to, uh, in order to uh, open a web page, you sort of remember what I'm talking about. So, um, so yeah, uh, basically we all, I mean Microsoft won this battle, kind of, but uh, I think that we all kind of lost because the web was broken for like half of us <laughs> at any one time, depending on what browser we were using. Um, and then the last one is uh, a battle that I read news about last week. <laughs> it started in about 2003, where the telecoms were interested in fragmenting the internet itself into a high-speed premium lane for people who can afford it, and then a slow lane for everyone else. <laughs> um, and Kelty says that uh, the, the important aspect of the internet is that there's only one of them. And uh, all the processes that we've had so far uh, pri privileges the singularity of the internet and to try not to fragment it into multiple incompatible networks. So, oh, he goes on and says that uh, governments, corporations, and NGOs have plenty of reasons to try to fragment it, but it's a check on this power by free software practices that have kept it one to date. So, uh, I hope that I've made this point that fragmentation is really the problem and these other solutions actually make it worse. For instance, with, with my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, with public domain, you know, you, know, you, have, you have OpenStreetMap here, and then uh, you, uh, if, once you run into a problem, if, 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 if we relicensed it, then uh, as soon as you had a problem, then someone would fork the problem, and all of a sudden you have two. And then they close it off with their proprietary solution, and then they're spending all their time enhancing it, making it better, while we're still feeding it. <laughs> and then eventually it becomes so good that it's a de facto standard and OpenStreetMap dies. And so we're back in proprietary land, and nobody wants that. Um, Attribution only is actually not that much better because uh, based on my understanding, you can make a derivative database and apply, so you have two, and then you can apply your proprietary license to that and you're still doing the same thing, except when OpenStreetMap dies, you have proprietary land enabled by OpenStreetMap, which is really embarrassing. So I don't really want to do that either. So, um, so uh, Richard Stallman uh, chimes in here and he says, uh, there are a lot of people who don't appreciate the ideals of freedom, and they'd really be really glad to take the work that we've done and jumpstart their own project, um, and then tempt people away. And we would, it's like we'd be making these programs and constantly have to compete with improved versions of our own programs, and that's no fun. Uh, and I totally agree. So, so what do we have? Um, what's amazing is that uh, we already have what those other projects never did, and that it's already unified. And uh, the ODBL is what currently guarantees that it's going to remain unified. And how does it do that? It uh, basically the share alike, the thing that everyone's complaining about, in that every time someone makes an improvement, it has to be given back to everyone else. And the second thing is that you can't change the license. It's like it has to stay ODBL. You can't apply that, that proprietary license to it. So it's those two things that keep our data free. Um, I'm going to try to drive this uh, point home with an analogy to uh, GNU Linux, uh, commonly, commonly known as Linux, the operating system. And basically, uh, Linux is uh, protected by the GNU public license, the GPL. It's very similar to the ODBL. And uh, let's see. Uh, in 1999, Eric Raymond uh, asked two very important questions about this. He says, uh, will Linux fragment? And this is exactly what I've just been talking about. Um, and what he says is that it's very unlikely to happen because the distributors are constrained to operate from a common base of source code. Hopefully this sounds familiar by now. And it's like they can't maintain differentiation because they have to give all those changes back. And since all parties understand this, nobody even thinks about doing those kind of maneuvers that, that killed proprietary Unix. Instead, they have to compete in ways that actually benefit everybody, which sounds great to me. Um, the other question he asks is, will one company dominate? So, will, you know, you have this great project. Will someone come in and just monopolize it and, and like drive everyone else off. At the time, it was Red Hat that they were worried about. And uh, what he says about this is that uh, the community norms in a binding legal form, effectively a license, is, keeps them from doing this. And the only thing that they can do is, is like, sell support um, with people who are willing to pay for it. So he, he concludes that it's probably not going to happen. Now, uh, I have one last Stallman quote, and I recommend that you don't try reading this um, <laughs> because it's, uh, it's pretty dense. I have uh, replaced, I've made in the next slide, I've replaced GNU with OSM to be to, for, for, the, for the reader, and also operating system for, with map data. So this is my adapted Stallman quote. <laughs> it says, uh, OSM will remove map data from the realm of competition. 
You will not be able to get an edge in this area, but neither will your competitors be able to get an edge over you. You and they will compete in other areas while benefiting mutually in this one. If your business is selling map data, you will not like OSM, but that's tough on you. If your business is something else, OSM can save you from being pushed into the expensive business of selling map data. So my call to action, it's kind of hard to come up with because I already have what I want. It's just a matter of like not messing it up. So <laughs> it's like uh, the suggestions that I, that I have, I came up with a couple. Uh, first one is when these suggestions are made, you have to like do your own investigation and find out who's gonna benefit from these changes. And if the answer is not everyone, then you have to reject the proposal. Uh, second, it's like uh, we're, 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 run, we're led by volunteer elected boards and they don't have control over, the, over OSM, but they do have a lot of like visibility and, and uh, 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 well, visibility and influence on, on where we go. And so it's like you have to join the OSMF and you have to like ask these people what they believe in. If they don't line up with your, your principles, then it's time to find someone else. And I think that uh, a lot of them would say the same thing. So, I, you know, I'm just here to uh, try to keep the data accessible for the innovators of today and five years of, for, from today, which is really like, like, you know, a really long time in technology terms. Um, I just, I think of OSM as this, as the, the goose that laid the golden egg, and I'm just trying to keep those, those eggs rolling in. Um, so finally, my conclusion, uh, in his uh, history book on maps that came out a couple of years ago, uh, Simon Garfield wrote uh, on the second to last page, uh, he's, he's talking about the future of maps, and he says that OpenStreetMap is a goodwill map and perhaps as close to a democratic map as we're gonna get. So um, I'm gonna take that literally. And if what he says is true, then perhaps we should consider our current license to be our constitution, and we should protect it, or the ODBL, so it can protect our data. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Chase? No questions? I like this. <laughs> it's all, this is all really broadcast, not really. Go ahead. So I 100% uh, agree, awesome. Uh, so do we need a carve out then for public domain like government data sets that I'm, can go into OSM? Um, it's like, that's, that, it is a really difficult problem. I, I realize, it's like I went through and I, I've um, watched like the videos of, of the calls to change the license. And um, I think what you're asking is like, you know, something to, uh, do we need some, like some way to uh, do transfers back and forth? Because uh, the government like, will, has to release things in public domain and we can import that stuff, but then it gets, you know, then we can't, we, they, it can't come back out. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a problem, and I don't really know what the answer to it is, but it's like my main concern is keeping the data free. And um, uh, also, it's like, uh, like joining our community is, is really a decision. And if, you know, it's, I think it's easier, it, as, as hard as it would be, it's easier to change that policy <laughs> than it would be to save our project if it, if it gets fragmented. Uh, I kind of have like a two-part question. So um, yesterday, like in the morning, there was a presentation about like law clinics in the OpenStreetMap community. Yeah. One of the things that she brought up that I thought was kind of interesting is that uh, when legal teams are sort of reviewing whether or not to use OSM, the sort of uh, general broad share like clause makes it difficult for them to know like when they trigger that provision and can oftentimes prevent them from getting involved in the community. And I wondered if you had any thoughts on that in particular, and then I'll save my follow-up until after you answer that. Um, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, uh, people, uh, like, one of the main concerns that people have is, like, when does the share-alike clause kick in? And there's actually been a lot of work, a lot of really good work done recently on the, the, the legal guidelines to the ODBL, like, namely, uh, can you use a patchwork of vendors and then, like, a horizontal layers approach so that if you make a good, good faith effort to take out, uh, you just use it as a base map and remove, like, all the features that kind of, like, collides with your stuff, then, then it's clean. So there's there's those two that have that have already been approved, and then there's a the next one that's up is uh, geocoding, which which uh, she talked about, and so it's like I'm really interested in seeing what they come out with there. Um, that's basically all I can say about it. 
Uh, and sort of my follow-up to that is, uh, you know, I like the parallels that you drew between like other sort of like licensing and like historically, I think that context is really important. And maybe it's my lack of familiarity with these struggles in general, but uh, my kind of open-ended question is like pragmatically, uh, what sort of like, like, regardless of what licensing agreements may exist, like where's our authority to actually be able to enforce them and make sure that they're followed? Uh, is it, you know, how much power does the community really have effectively to stop someone right now from just forking off the entire project and doing whatever they want with it. Uh, you know, we may have like a licensing agreement, but if someone just flagrantly disregards it, you know, is there really anything that we can do? Like, do we sue these people or, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, that's it's, it's another really good question. And um, I think my take on it is that, uh, let me see. Um, well, in, it, I, I, I'm not sure that it's been tested, you know? And um, it, it's, so I think it's, the answer is unclear. And like whether it'll be enforceable in other countries, I'm not sure about that either. But I think the main point is to, uh, is to, is to keep it free. Like, I can't say, just say in America, but uh, like, like having like lar these large companies like make this big thing. And then I think that if, if that happened, then there would be a lawsuit. Um, and I think it would probably be targeting like sort of like a corporation that's that's uh, that's that's using it for a large commercial use. That would be my guess. I'm, I'm fine. Okay, uh, please provide Chase with a warm thank you for coming today. Thank you.